good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video today we are going to be discussing the upcoming wwe draft guys yes this friday on smackdown on fox we have the wwe draft that will be conducted and then it will continue on to the following monday night raw and we will see where these superstars are going to land i'm super excited for this if you guys did not know when i was growing up watching the ruthless aggression era i of course came in towards the end of the attitude era on into the ruthless aggression era and i remember when the first draft took place super hyped for it you know i was super young at that point. I was like seven or six or seven years old and I remember just the draft and the whole concept of it. I've always been a big athlete and a sports fan so the draft, the idea of it and just how awesome it is just really always excites me. NFL, NBA draft, I always, you know, mock draft it up. I love drafts. I'm obsessed with them and it's kind of weird but anyways, when they redid it in 2016, I thought that was excellent. Finn Balor got called up. He became the Universal Champion. It was just a really good time for wrestling so with this reset, with them getting everything back in order with this draft having a specific roster for Raw and a specific roster for SmackDown and, you know, Fox wanting two specific brands and USA wanting two specific brands. I freaking love it that we're getting a reset and we don't have to deal with any bullcrap wildcard rule anymore and I'm very excited for it, guys. So we have right here, we have Raw over here and SmackDown over here. I mean, to be honest, nobody's on any brands. They've been crossing brands left and right with this wildcard rule. So, I mean, nobody's really a part of a brand right now. So with this full reset, it's going to be epic. We're going to go through what I expect out of the draft and we're going to go through my projections for each roster and we're going to split it up into Raw and Smackdown. We're going to go through the champions. We're going to go through the divisions and we're going to break it down into single stars, women, and then tag teams and we're going to break it all down and just talk about it, discuss it, and give you my personal thoughts and opinions. I do have a draft order but it kept getting mixed up and stuff so I didn't think that I wanted to give you guys my draft order because it'd be really, really complicated. I can say if you guys want my honest opinions though, I am going to start off. I think Becky Lynch will go number one overall. I think Brock Lesnar will be the first SmackDown pick. So I think Becky will go number one to Raw. Brock will be number one to SmackDown. Seth Rollins will be number two to Raw. And then Charlotte will be number two to SmackDown. That's what I'm guessing for that. And I could be wrong about that, but that's just where I'm going. And I also think that Kane Velasquez could also be part of the draft to SmackDown. I think that's also a thing that could happen. He may not be included in the draft pool, but I, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that it is possible. Another possibility could be Ronda Rousey returning and her being on a specific brand. But for the most part, guys, we're just going to separate these. I guess we can start off with Raw and then we'll go over to SmackDown and we'll just kind of cover the champions who I expect to go to each brand. And I do have some major projections for the draft as well that uh, I have like three or four notes right here that I think is going to take place in the draft and I'm really hyped for it. One thing that kind of sucks is Finn Balor won't be included in the draft because he's a part of NXT and I love that. I'm very happy for Finn Balor. He can get away from the main roster for a little while, live his good life over on NXT, give us great matches, give us great feuds and I'm really happy for Finn Balor at this moment. Love that man to death. One of my favorite talents and I'm super excited to see him to go to war on Wednesdays with AEW. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and break up the rosters and we'll cover Raw's men, Raw's women, and then Raw's tag teams, and then we'll split it up and go over to SmackDown and do the same thing for the men, women, and tag teams. All right, guys, so what we're looking at right here is the main Raw roster. So this is our single star, no tag teams, no women included right here, guys. I'm going to list them off right quick. We have Seth Rollins, the Universal Champion. We have AJ Styles as the United States Champion. We have The Fiend, Braun Strowman, Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, Aleister Black, The Miz, Samoa Joe, Ali, Gable, Elias, Cesaro, Cedric, Titus O'Neil, Sin Cara, Buddy Murphy, and Apollo. Now, one thing I will say real quick before we get into the rest of it, guys, is that I think that R-Truth, the 24-7 Champion, I think he's going to just be like... I I think they're planning on moving the 24-7 championship over to just YouTube and kind of having it its own thing or having it be on both brands. So I'm not really going to count our truth, but I think he's going to be on both brands or something of that nature. Another thing that I think is going to take place at the draft, guys, wherever Mike Kanellis and Maria Kanellis end up, I think that Mike Kanellis will end up being the last pick of the draft to kind of, you know, carry on that loser mentality that him and, you know, that Maria picks on him about. I think that is what they're planning to do there. I don't think that Gargano or Baszler will join, you know, any any roster. I think that they're going to stay on NXT, especially with NXT still being on live television or just going to live television to compete with AEW and everything on Wednesday nights. I think they're going to keep Gargano and Baszler in NXT. And the last thing that I will say about it, guys, is I think there will be somebody that goes undrafted and they will go down to NXT. I don't know who it is, but maybe somebody like Apollo or something of that nature. Uh, maybe I, I don't know, but I think something like Apollo or somebody of that nature, maybe Gable, I'm not sure, 
will go down to NXT and maybe develop and maybe make their way back to the main roster. That'd be a really cool storyline. But I think this is a really solid roster to start off with. You guys have some notable names. Randy Orton coming over from SmackDown. I think AJ and uh, uh, Rollins obviously staying on the same brand. I didn't want to put The Fiend on Raw. I feel like The Fiend may go over to SmackDown on Fox. I feel like Fox may want, you know, Bray Wyatt. But I don't know if that fits that sports realm that they're going for. So I really don't know if I want him over there. So I'm just going to go with The Fiend staying over on Monday Night Raw. Kevin Owens obviously coming over. I think he's going to want a separation from the blue brand. We got Ali over here, Aleister Black, Buddy Murphy, Cedric Alexander. Ton of great talent over here, but I think that overall, I think this is really good. You have Samoa Joe in the back over here. No Way Jose still here. You have The Miz still here. A lot of talent still on the Raw roster, but I think this is sort of collectively, it was really tough, guys, to, to separate and to get these rosters the way I wanted them, but I thought ultimately this is best for Raw for the main single stars to compete for the mid-card and top-card championships. So transitioning into the Raw Women's Division, guys, we obviously have Becky Lynch, the man being the number one overall draft pick over to Raw. Joining her on this roster will be Asuka, Alexa Bliss, Natalya, Naomi, Ember Moon, the Iconics, Billy Kay, and Peyton Royce. Mandy Rose, potentially. I have that as a potential because I'm not sure if they're going to split up fire and desire between Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. They could split them up and we could have Mandy Rose over there. Tamina, I think Nia Jax will be returning at the draft and being selected over to the Raw brand. And I also forgot to add Ruby Riot to this so go ahead and add Ruby Riot and Sarah Logan over here. So I think Ruby Riot and Nia Jax will both be returning from injury, and they could both potentially go to the same brand, but they'll probably split them up. But for now, I have them on the same brand over on Raw. So obviously, you're probably wondering, well, why is Asuka split up? Why is Alexa Bliss split up from Ricky Cross? This is what I think. This is the best time to disband the Women's Tag Team Championships, guys. This is the best way to do it. You go ahead, you break up Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. They don't need to be a team anymore. Bring Alexa Bliss over to Raw. Asuka and Kyrie Sane need to break up, and you disband and you get rid of the Women's Tag Team Championships. They should have never been made in the first place. They've been totally overlooked, and I know there's rumors going around right now that they are going to be thrashed, so go ahead and trash them. You know, it is what it is. It sucks, but you know what? we got to live on with it. I do not think it sucks. I think it's actually a really good idea considering they always get overlooked. They never focus on them, and they need to focus on the singles division before even thinking about breaking out into tag team divisions. There's not enough tag team for the women, and they can't put enough focus on it, so I think they should go ahead and just thrash them and split up them, and I think Austin should come over to Raw, be a heel, and uh, take on Becky Lynch. I think that'd be a great rematch from the Royal Rumble. So that rounds out your Raw women's division. And finally, guys, ending things off with the Raw tag team divisions, we obviously have the Raw tag team champions between Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode. Also in this division, we have the OC, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. We have the Viking Raiders, who are not pictured here because we don't have figures of them yet. We have Rowan and Harper coming over from SmackDown. I think that this is big. Ever since they lost to Roman and Daniel Bryan, I don't think they have anything else to do on SmackDown. Go ahead and separate us from those guys and get Rowan and Harper over onto Monday Night Raw. Also, we have the returning Usos. We have Heavy heavy Machinery, who we don't have figures of, and I don't have the B-team featured here, but I do have figures of them. I just thought that, you know, what's the point? They're not ever going to get pushed. So I have them included here as well. So rounding out the tag division, you have the OC, Rude and Ziggler, Viking Raiders, Rowan and Harper, the Usos, Heavy Machinery, and the B-team. And there's probably some other teams that you could probably plug in here. Kurt Hawkins and Ryder could potentially be over here, maybe, or something of that nature. But this is what I think for the Raw Tag Team Division. Pretty solid, I think. You know, you have the OC. I think Ziggler and Root are going to continue to build upon their tag team uh, royalty they got going. Viking Raiders are being built up nice. The Usos returning from injury will be really nice. I think they could potentially be on SmackDown over there with Roman Reigns, but you will see uh, why I put them away from Roman Reigns in a minute. We also have Harper and Rowan coming over, so I think this is a really talented division that will be really nice, but that is complete for my Raw division, guys. I think that this is pretty balanced. We're going to go over to SmackDown now and cover the men women and tag team divisions but that does it for the monday night raw updated rosters following the brand new wwe draft all right, guys, so moving over to SmackDown side, we have the main singles division. So right now, we have the WWE Champion Brock Lesnar. We have the Intercontinental Champion Shinsuke Nakamura. I think that Roman Reigns will obviously go over to Fox. You know, Roman Reigns, he's been in the interviews. He's been in the, you know, all the things leading up to Fox and all that stuff, all the promo packages and stuff. So I think it makes sense for him to come over. Rey Mysterio, obviously, will be featured. Him and Cain Velasquez. I think that Cain Velasquez will also be a feature on SmackDown Live just because of, you know, all the Fox stuff again and him being a big focus on, the, on that opening episode 
being the first challenger for Brock, apparently. We also have Daniel Bryan, Kofi Kingston, Sami Zayn, Trash King, Corbin, Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, Ricochet, Mysterio, Rusev, Andrade, Shelton Benjamin, EC3, and Mike Kanellis. I also have a returning John Morrison. I think John Morrison will return, and he will go over to the blue brand. I think he would fit better over there. I felt like Monday Night Raw had enough. So I went over and added John Morrison. So I think that both rosters are pretty freaking stacked on both sides as far as the singles divisions go, especially if you throw in Cain Velasquez and all that BS going on. Uh, I think that these solid, these rosters are very solid, and we haven't even gotten into the tag teams, but I think that this is going to be a perfect round out. You know, I split up. I felt like Bobby Lashley and Rusev had to come to the same brand because they, we have to finish that storyline as weird and cringy and uh, crappy as it is. You know, we have to finish off that storyline between Bobby Lashley and Rusev, so I went ahead and put them on the same show. And do you think that Rusev and Lana are going to literally split up and have Bobby Lashley doing these weird skits with Lana away from him on Raw and SmackDown not being together for real in real life? I don't think that would work out right, so I went ahead and put them on the same brand. Mysterio obviously following the Lesnar storyline. Trash Corbin getting away from Raw. I felt like he killed it, so I think that he needs to get off of that red brand. Andrade, Ricochet, EC3, Sami Zayn. Tons of, tons of talent over here on SmackDown, so I'm excited for this roster, and we may get some NXT call-ups. I said there won't be any, but that's potential that there could be, and I think you have a lot of sports feel oriented uh, superstars right here to bring over to Fox. So that is it for my singles division for the men on SmackDown, guys. So now let's move on to the women's division. So moving on to the women's division of SmackDown, guys, we have Charlotte, obviously the SmackDown Live women's champion. Not SmackDown Live. God dang, why do I keep saying live? I'm gonna have to get used to that. I like that we dropped the live. On SmackDown, joining her will be Sasha Banks, Bayley, Zelina Vega, Lana, Kyrie Sane, Lacey Evans. All four of those women are actually not featured. So Zelina Vega, Lana, Kyrie Sane, and Lacey Evans are not pictured here. Also not pictured here is Dana Brooke and Maria Kanellis. Obviously, that would make it look a lot more balanced. That's probably why the Raw roster, as far as the women, looks way more stacked. But you gotta think, this is a two-hour show compared to a three-hour show over on Raw. So also joining the division will be Carmella, Nikki Cross, Sonya Deville, Liv Morgan, another one not featured, and possibly Mandy Rose. Again, it depends on which one, uh, if they decide to split them up or not. I think that they probably won't split them up if you're going ahead and splitting up Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, and if you're splitting up Asuka and Kyrie Sane, which I think is the biggest part of this draft, guys. They really do need to split those two teams up. Get rid of the women's tag team championships. This is the best way to build around both divisions. Another one is Bailey. I could see her going over to Raw, but with Sasha Banks losing to Becky in this Hell in a Cell, I think it is imperative for her to go over to the blue brand. And her and Bailey building upon that storyline they had, I think that would work out better if you continued that here going over to SmackDown Live. Damn it, I did it again. But now that we've covered the women's division on SmackDown, guys, let's move over to the tag team division on the blue brand. And rounding out the finale of our tag team divisions, guys, we're over on the blue brand and we are completing it up. I'm really excited about this tag team division. I think it's really stacked. We have the New Day. We have the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Revival. We have the AOP returning from injury. We have the Hardy Boys returning. I think that'll be a big get for Fox. I think that, you know, everybody knows who the Hardy Boys are. They have that really good sports feel and everybody, you know, the nostalgia pops. They're going to really dig that. I think Jeff Hardy is obviously cleared. I know he had that run in with the law. He got arrested for another DUI. I don't think they're going to punish him again. I think they're just going to let the man come in silently and him and Matt Hardy are going to get together. They had to relinquish the SmackDown tag titles last time they had them, so I think they're going to go on a quest to recapture those from the Revival. There's your returning Hardy Boys to the division. You have Lucha House Party in Grand Match Elite, Lince Dorado, and Kalisto. I don't want them on Monday Night Raw anymore. It really brings the show down, and I don't want to see them. I want to see them on the on this blue brand here. I want to see them on SmackDown. I think it'd be a much better fit for them. I don't want to see another OC match with them, so get them away. And then I think Ryan Ryder and Hawkins could also fit here if you wanted to. I couldn't think of another tag team. If there's more tag teams that I'm leaving out, please let me know. But those are the ones that came to my mind. But I think that's a pretty stacked division so far. And they could obviously build on it if you wanted to call up a team or two from NXT. And then I think that really what really brings down the tag team divisions, guys, is that we've had so many tag teams break up and leave the WWE that it sucks. You know, Aiden English and Simon Gotch would have been a fine tag team. Enzo and Cass would have been a great tag team. American Alpha would have been a great tag team. And then obviously if DIY would have stayed a tag team and eventually got called up to the main roster, that would have been loaded tag team divisions. But that does it for your SmackDown tag team division following the WWE draft. 
But that pretty much rounds everything up for the WWE Draft, guys. I would love to know your analysis down in the comment section below. You know, I tried to take my time with it and write everything out. You know, I tried, again, I tried to do a mock draft order, but it was really difficult to call who's going to go where and what pick is going to go where. And it really got me confused on which guys would go where. And it really messed me up. So I went ahead and just wrote down who I thought would fit with each roster instead of trying to draft order it. So I hate that I won't be able to predict the draft order. But again, I do think Becky Lynch will go number one overall to Raw. Brock will go number one overall to SmackDown. Number two will be Rollins, obviously, over to Raw. And then number two for SmackDown will be Charlotte. And again, I think Mike Kanellis will be the last pick. Gargano and Baszler will stay in NXT. And there will be somebody that goes undrafted from the main roster that ends up going down to NXT like Finn Balor. And they will try to work their way up. I think that's a beautiful storyline that you could write. But this is WWE, so I'm not going to get my hopes up. Another one that could potentially happen is The Fiend going over to SmackDown, which wouldn't shock me. Again, all of this is just predictions and analysis and my own personal thoughts. I would love to know yours down in the comment section below. What do you think of my picks? Do you think they're accurate? What is your call? I would love to know down in the comment section below. I just hope it's exciting. I hope it gets me entertained. I love the draft. I love the concept. I hope that this means maybe they could add the draft to 2K20. Highly doubt it. They should have added GM mode. Sucks to see it. But hopefully this means we'll get it in 2K21 or something. I'm not sure. But I'm really excited for people to come back from injury. I hope Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy get to get back on our TVs, especially as a primetime feature on SmackDown or Raw. It doesn't really matter to me. But that does it for this video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Leave your predictions down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.